on the topic, why should we deal with personal finance and financial education? We are joined by Patrick Duane from Duane Consulting. Everyone who is watching TV in Germany probably recognizes him now. And he will have a fireside chat with our chairman, Professor Dr. Philipp Sandner. Enjoy. So where, where is, where is anybody? So, welcome Patrick. So maybe you can hear us, does it work? I hear you perfectly. Excellent. Do you hear me too? Yes, excellent. So oh, maybe perfect. you very briefly uh, present yourself, that would be best I think, and uh, maybe or most probably everybody knows you already, but <laughs> some, of, some of us maybe not, so therefore for all of them to onboard everybody, maybe you quickly present yourself. Yes, I will do, uh, Philip. Thanks for inviting me here to the crypto conference in Frankfurt. It's a big honor for me to be here. And um, who am I? I'm basically a former investment banker. I'm having my 25, 25th jubilee uh, in the financial market starting in 1997. Worked at the stock exchange in Frankfurt on the Wall Street. Um, then worked for uh, Deutsche Bank and another bank in collateral management during the Lehman crisis. And in 2015, I decided to change gears a little and become a financial journalist on television. That's where people recognize me um, when, when they see me, when they watch me on Welt, uh, where I work most of all like a financial expert and a stock exchange correspondent. Beside that, I finished my second book. The first was released in 2020. That's where we met uh, the first time, Philip. And my second book uh, will be released on 3rd of June. So. so maybe I think this should be interesting for everybody here. Uh, what about your book? What's basically written there? Um, maybe you can give us a very brief summary, you know, with maybe a couple of sentences. Of course. So the first book is basically a financial basic book. Um, it is taking into consideration what mindset people have when it comes to money, especially here in Germany. And there starts the problem. And I give solutions to these problems, changing the money mindset in a very constructive, very positive way, not having, uh, not being afraid of money at all. Or um, there are some sayings in Germany that money is dirty, that it's not good, that only the criminals and the dirty people, they, they make a lot of money and that it's not fair and all this kind of stuff. And my first book gets rid of all of that in the very beginning. And then later on um, from... Um, page 60, 65, it turns into a book where certain aspects of financial basic knowledge is uh, brought in a very uh, low level, easy to enter um, way to the people and talk about um, the real estate market, stock market, bond market, certificates, um, everything. And then you have very general um, aspects of the financial markets. And the, the way it is done is um, the, the readers are uh, say hello and witness with a uh, do, uh, very easy to understand. And the second book is um, is more or less an evaluation of that. It says it focusing, uh, the name of the second book is Geld geht auch grün und nachhaltig means sustainability is key uh, even for your wallet in a way, saying that investing in um, climate neutral technologies, stocks, ETFs, whatever, could make you profit from this um, very... I say, um, highly driven potential that we see even with the Russian-Ukraine crisis that needs all of us to, to rethink um, what, what we, how, we, how we see commodities in these days. But uh, crypto assets are also included, right? Oh yeah, crypto assets in my second book are also included. I give a brief introduction. I, I need to admit that I'm, I was and I am still not a crypto expert. But uh, talking with you for a lot of times, I get a glimpse what the crypto um, uh, universe uh, is, is all about and that it's so necessary to bring this new topic to, to the main street. Huh? Um, because it is, of course, I mean, when I started with, with receiving emails in my spam folder um, saying something about blockchain and Bitcoin, it was, I think, 2013. And I was laughing and I was saying, oh, wow, what is that? And what do people want me, a uh, snowball system or whatever? And then taking uh, a closer look at that and getting an, understand, an understanding of the idea um, of the decentralized finance um, idea, 
this is what I um, more psychologically uh, like very much. Yeah, but uh, what you have just explained, I think it's very normal. I think everybody here in the room, at home, in the office, including you, Patrick, including myself, it takes a while to pass through this journey to understand crypto assets. In the beginning, everybody starts with skepticism, then people start reading, watching YouTube, coming to this conference, talking to friends and so on, and then it takes maybe months if you're lucky, sometimes it's also taking years if you're unlucky, until you're understanding basically the brilliance of what's going on here and that it's a very, very interesting asset class, right? Absolutely, totally agreed. And uh, of course, you discussed during the uh, crypto conference a variety of aspects that come along um, the consumption of energy, for example, um, uh, that the, the legal side is still on the pressure. Uh, we were talking about that um, the, the, the administrations, they had huge problem with dealing with um, the Bitcoin. But at least, and this is maybe the, 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 the lucky part, they, they left that on the side for now and uh, will be, I mean, hopefully, hopefully a consultant by you and your experts a little further and don't, don't make that mistakes, you know, to stop the Bitcoin or other uh, blockchain technologies. Yeah. And maybe, Patrick, why do you think, why is, personal uh, why is personal finance so important for young people and basically for everybody? Is it, is it because we are going into a decade of inflation? Yeah, there are some views on the horizon that um, give the impression that we do so. Um, because the political situation is very difficult, the, um, the supply chain pro problem that we suffer not only now due uh, to the war in uh, the Ukraine, but also before due to the shutdown, the lockdowns in Shanghai and China in general, shows how fragile, how vulnerable all those sustainable sustain, um, su supply chains are, uh, honestly. And that gives us a hard time. And um, even now, I, I remember an interview um, between the former Deutsche Bundesbank president and, and, and a journalist where they were discussing about inflation in 2021. And they were arguing about if, if it will be 2 or 3%. And if you take a look at the rate 7.5 in the eurozone right now, uh, looking backwards, um, it, you you think how difficult it is even for experts to to uh, foresee what is coming and to to have a solution for that. Because this is what you ask me. The thing is, there are solutions for these circumstances, even for young people, especially for young people. Um, you have to take a look at different asset classes. You have to have a diverse portfolio of, of, of sure. And before that, before you invest, of course, we all, you as in university, but also in school, we need to bring financial education to the main street, to young people, to young children. And uh, this is why I work, for example, for uh, charities that especially take a look on these things like Stiftung Rechnen, um, the Finland Foundation, because a lot of young people, I don't know if you heard that, um, they're, they have, they're on debt. I mean, not comparable to, to America where they have student loans and stuff like that, but they run in debt because they are not educated how to deal with their money. And this is very, sorry, very difficult. Therefore, you need to educate them. Bottom down um, and from, from, from down to up, I mean, everywhere. We need to implement financial education um, as much as possible and interdisciplinary between different players, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Actually, um, l last week I also had lectures with uh, people here at the Frankfurt School studying uh, Master of Finance and so on. And then some of them also asked me, you know, what to do personal finance and should they purchase the ETF uh, or any other asset out there and so on. And I think, you know, the best recommendation I would have, but this is also probably in your book, right? But the best recommendation I would have is do an Excel sheet on an annual level, put there your annual income, let it increase by 20%, 30% per year, add the tax, you know, don't forget to add the tax, and then add inflation. And then basically you add another sheet in the Excel table where you then also expect real estate prices to rise by 10 or 15% per 
per year. And then you come to the very, very, very sad conclusion that there will be no possibility for you to purchase a real estate object. Right? Oh, yeah, and this, this is, is honestly, this is, I did this myself and it's extremely shocking. And therefore, I think you have to do this Excel sheet yourself to get the awareness that you have to do something in the area of uh, personal finance. You should not let it done by your banker or by any asset manager. You have to care about yourself. You have to educate yourself. You have to plan tax, real estate increases, salary increases, and only then, uh, also following what you have said, you have to think in portfolios, you have to think in asset classes with a very interesting upside potential and so on, and then you can make it basically potentially with your family later on finding a real estate <laughs> object, right? Honestly, it's, it's a very I, I, sad I, truth. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. And you know what is so good about that behavior? When you put it on an Excel sheet or when you write down, I make lists like to-do lists or bucket lists. And you fill in all these kind of things, not so technically, of course, when you calculate your real estate and if it's financially worth it and stuff like that, okay, you should do that. But even writing down, okay, what do I want? And then, and then you have this list. You see um, black and white how difficult this is and how, um, how much effort you have to put into this. So you need to have this first step, very basic financial education to get an understanding and not to be dependent, as you mentioned, on, on the banker guy. Because in my book, for example, there is a chapter um, comparing banking um, products, uh, more or less. I mean, not the ETFs and what they sell too, but the, the provision-based products. And if you have someone who is taking money for uh, consulting you on your financial basis, I would, I would recommend to anybody who's watching to take into consideration, to go to these kind of people, which call them in Germany, Honorarberater. They take money from you to, to analyze your portfolios, analyze your insurances, everything that you got financially. Uh, and it's not so expensive, by the way. And then they um, give you a brief introduction about your situation based on your wants, your needs, your income, everything. And, and this is a smart solution if you don't want to spend too much of your own time into all of this. But of course, you should at least read one or two of these financial basic books. It doesn't need to, have, uh, doesn't need to be mine, but to have a clear understanding and not to be late because time is critical and timing is the critical part. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and with this, we are also back to, to crypto assets. Uh, one remark here, I think the advice talking to other people, talking to parents, talking to friends, talking to specified consultants makes very much sense. But And actually, I, I agree 100%, Patrick, but there is one flaw here. <laughs> These people don't understand crypto at this point of time, and therefore they cannot advise you to add this to, to the portfolio. And with this, they are missing out of, on this huge opportunity on crypto assets, right? And therefore, my personal second advice would be to, especially to young people, as soon as possible, investigate crypto assets, you know, the top five assets, the top three assets, understand it, and primarily understand it, the asymmetric upside, downside potential here. But Philip, let me ask you this. My impression is that the young generation, and I'm 46 now, um, that the younger generation, so the generation Z, for example, they are very keen on crypto assets because of the gamification factors that come along with crypto, and, and the apps that they are using, the Robin Hoods and the, the Reddits and all those um, forums and plenums that they're, where they're, they're discussing several topics. Or do you think there is still a, a long way to go? No, you're right, but it's a, it's a question how you define young. Actually, I, I feel still being part of the young generation <laughs> somehow. <laughs> and, and you hopefully as well. So therefore, maybe, maybe it's also a misnomer and I specified it wrong. Actually, Everybody should uh, try to inspect it. But I think young people have more time to investigate it, so they might be quicker onboarded to this technology. Uh, young people might also be more open, such that they can digest all this in case it's, it's basically new. And therefore, I think it's, it's just very important to invest time now as soon as possible, also be before inflation basically is destroying, is destroying uh, the wealth uh, out there. So I personally would expect that we have an inflation phase coming to us, um, say, 10 to 20 percent over a couple of years. So this destroys half of the wealth people have. With one exception, once again, 
in case you're able to do debt, for example, real estate debt or other things, then you might be better off because debt interest rates are, for example, 1.9%, inflation is right now at 7.5%, so just by this kind of trick, you're gaining wealth by having debt, you're gaining 5%. You know, it's, it's an absolutely true. crazy world. And a friend of mine, oh, well, it's better, let's, yeah, a guy out there in Frankfurt <laughs> doing asset management, he said the following sentence, and that's a very shocking sentence, think, think about it, the sentence goes as follows, debt is an asset. And if you really understand what I'm saying here, debt is an asset, you, you now understand how crazy the world is because debt cannot by definition be an asset except we are entering a low interest and a high inflation phase. And this shows how crazy this world has gotten and therefore it's so, so, so important that you are also uh, helping, well, we at the university also, that uh, we are working on uh, educating people with regard to financial um, education. Do you have any, any more advices on the last minutes we have, Patrick? Yeah, the thing is, what concerns me a lot, and you were talking about inflation rates uh, in Germany and Eurozone, but in other countries, and for example, in Turkey, the inflation rate is 61%, and that really drops down in, in, uh, to, the, to the common people. And it will, the, the question is so not only how to deal with that on a financial basis, but on a social secure basis. Um, I mean, um, we will see a lot of things going on. And with Russia, they, with Mr. Putin on, on the top of, of the country, they will never come back. And the question is, how do we exchange commodities? And I agree, the world inflation, due to this circumstances all around, and we have not spoken about China, uh, we'll see uh, a couple of years uh, with high inflation rates. And the question is, exactly as you said, what could be the solution? Because it's, it's very, it's very um, uh, cynetic and uh, cynical, sorry. It's very cynical. I own my own house, and the, the price of the house in 10 years was um, doubled twice in this 10 years. And if I want to buy another house, no matter what it costs, because the, 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 um, the, the repayment that I've done, uh, the mortgage that I have uh, uh, finished so far, gives me credibility, as you said, as an asset, to go to the bank and buy another house. And I don't have to put my own value and my own money in. I can do that often and often and often again, as long as the system maybe collapse. <laughs> I, I don't know. But it's critical. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, the, the administration is checking more and more specific, and it's not so easy to get uh, um, a, a debt and a mortgage anymore. And there are regulations. If you have more than three, for example, then it's a, a business and not private uh, Thing. Um, but but it's going to be definitely a, a very interesting topic. And, of course, last sentence from my side, it is very, very important that people face what's coming and see what's coming and talk about it and find solutions. And maybe we, we see through crypto, cryptocurrencies and blockchain technologies, we find solution even on a political um, uh, side that comes along because this is what real democracy could be in a better future, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. And that I think that this summarizes also very nicely. That's why it makes sense to invest quite some time into understanding all this, uh, basically then condensing uh, some kind of view about how personal finance is, is potentially working, how you lose money, how you potentially uh, gain money, and how, how, and that's the most important point, and then I would also like to close, how to basically keep purchasing power for, for those days when uh, I myself am getting 60, 70, 80 or 90 because then we also need still some cash and what happens with inflation rates on the rise, the social uh, payments I'm also doing here with my working contract, you know, I will not get anything back in a couple of years and that's very, very, very sad and therefore it's very important to really investigate this topic and spend quite some time by reading your book and, uh, and also uh, understanding crypto assets, right? That's for when now the circle closes. Philip, that's, this is a very, very good point. Last sentence. It's so important to invest money uh, to have an income in the future, not only by work. And this is what we have to clarify to people. You, don't can, you, you cannot only go to work to, to generate an income. You need to invest to generate an income. And then uh, maybe you have uh, certain uh, preferences when it comes to the different asset classes, but you need to make sure that you have more pillars 
on, on, on which your wealth is standing to give it a, a foundation that is stable and um, strong. Perfect. Thanks very much. And with this, Marcel, let's move on with the agenda. And Patrick, thank you very much for coming here. Thanks for having me. Enjoy.